Six observations you can make on the equinox. Is the Earth flat or is it a globe? You could find out yourself making your own careful observations. So this is being recorded a few days before the September 22nd, 2017 equinox, but the equinox happens twice a year and here are several of the dates in uh, the next couple years. So there are several videos I've recorded about how you can carefully make observations on the equinox. Six observations uh, specifically, and we're going to cover them one at a time here. Number one, azimuth of sunrise and sunset. Azimuth simply means uh, what direction, like north, south, east, or west on the compass. So if you have a flat earth map and you kind of plot where the sun would be at sunrise, where it might be at sunset, uh, you can actually measure the predicted azimuth of sunrise and sunset. Whereas on the globe earth model, uh, since the terminator line goes north-south, it looks like everyone will see the sun rise and set at due east and due west. Number two, horizon angle of sunrise and sunset. This is an aspect I've never seen uh, mentioned in any other Flat Earth Debate video, but if you record the sun uh, as it rises, its path in the sky as it rises or as it sets, you can actually measure the angle it makes with the horizon. And then if the Earth is a globe, you can actually take 90 minus your latitude and see if that angle matches. Whereas on the Flat Earth model, uh, there's no such relationship to latitude. Number three, elevation angle of the sun. You're going to make yourself a plastic uh, solar clinometer using a plastic protractor. And if you point it at the sun and take the protractor reading, if the Earth is a globe, you can simply take 90 minus the protractor, or I'm sorry, 90 minus your angle of elevation, and you'll get your latitude. Whereas if the Earth is flat, you can actually triangulate how high the sun is in the sky. Number four, path of the sun. This technique is going to use a sundial using a simple gnomon. And so this is my favorite observation of all. Using a geometry, I predicted that the pattern of shadows on a flat Earth would be a semicircle. And so I used a Gleason's map and I moved a little desk lamp around and I found that it was indeed a perfect semicircle. Then using the globe Earth model, I predicted the pattern of shadows would be a perfectly straight line, like the blue dots. And then I tried it out on an actual globe, and it was, in fact, a straight line. So this will really give you a huge clue as to the shape of the Earth, if you do this observation yourself. Number five, hours of sunshine. So many flat Earth folks say that the sun is a spotlight uh, casting its light down on the Earth. And so if you take a look at this spotlight model, uh, you may come up with a problem with the number of hours of sunshine on the equinox. So you may need to modify the, uh, the, the pattern of illumination. Whereas in the globe earth model, uh, we have a terminator line that runs north-south. So every point on the, the globe will receive approximately 12 hours of sunshine during the uh, equinox. Number six, wagon wheel sunspots. So on the flat earth model, if you move a uh, beach ball in a pattern that the sun moves above the equator, you can actually see what the, uh, what the pattern of, of the colored panels would be, uh, how the colored panels might move on the beach ball relative to an observer. And you may conclude that um, the sunspots are gonna sweep across the sun uh, left to right. Whereas if you analyze it from a globe perspective, you realize that uh, since an observer is standing on the sloping surface of the globe, uh, they're gonna see the, um, the sun at different orientations. Uh, thus the, the change, the angles will change in a rotational fashion, not a sweeping fashion. So the, we would call this the wagon wheel effect. And you can actually measure the angle uh, that the sun, uh, sunspots rotate. So again, if you would like more details on these uh, observations and how to carefully make them, uh, please check out the original uh, videos. To be kind is more important than to be right. Many times what people need is not a brilliant mind that speaks, but a special heart that listens. Thank you.